go ahead and start first up. We're going to make a new project and we are going to call this Rock Smacker Toot. We will make it a retro style project. We want it 320 by 180 and optimize for pixel art. Go ahead and click create. Excellent. So now we have our layer and we're going to kind of build this in steps. So first off, let's go ahead and just get some of the basics in. So we have our event sheet here. I'm going to go ahead and name this to rename this to E game. I prefer to put an E in front of my event sheets. It's just my personal preference. You can name, name it however you like. And for the layout, let's go ahead and just call this game for now. But we'll obviously be making more layer levels later, so that will be changing in a bit. So really, this is just our testing layout for the moment. So first thing we're going to want to do is let's get a background in. This white is a bit too much. So we're going to go over to layer 1. Let's go ahead, while we're here, let's rename layer 0. Sorry, I said layer 1. Layer 0 to background. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click, scroll on down to tiled background. Let's just call this grass. Insert, click on the layer, and we are going to go up to this little folder icon here to load an image from file. We will open up our Rocksmacker tutorial folder, and we are going to go to Tiny Adventure Pack, Other, Miscellaneous, and select Grass. Go ahead and zoom on in. Now this grass is a solid green color. I'm not a super fan of having my background, especially on a top-down thing, be a solid color. I, it just doesn't look as good to me. So what I want to do is add the minimalist of grass type. So what we're going to do is select the eyedropper tool, select the color. Let's drag the darkness slider down just a little. Select the pencil tool. Make sure it is set to 1 for its pixel size. And just go ahead and put three dots on the grass. And we can go ahead and close that out. Now if we zoom in, we can see that the grass kind of has a little bit of texture to it, especially once we... Oh, let's go ahead and select anywhere on the layout. We are going to look over here at our layout information down here where we have Editor. We are going to go down to Snap to Grid and check that on. And grid size, what we want to do is actually make this 16, 16 because we want our grid, our grid, all of our... All of our art assets are 16 by 16, at least our main art assets. So now that we have snap to grid, we can see that the box here will actually snap up to where we need it. So we'll snap it up to the top left, select it, and drag it out over the whole thing. We won't need the whole thing at the moment, but let's just fill that all in. Now the background, we don't really need to do much else to. So we can go ahead and lock this layer. Let's go ahead, right click, add layer, and let's call this the player layer. And now we're going to get our player box in. So this is going to be the item that actually moves around. So we will double click, scroll on down to sprite. We will add a new sprite. Let's call this player underscore box. Click. We will resize this. We want to set this to 16 by 16. Click OK. So now we have a 16 by 16 box here. We're going to pick a color to use for our player box. This won't be seen after we get past putting in animations, so it's not important what color you put in. Feel, whatever, feel free to put in whatever you like. I tend to use orange. That's just a personal preference. And then we're going to go ahead and go down and check our bounding box. That is set to the whole perimeter. That is fine. We will go over to the origin point, and we actually want this to be in the top left. So you can right click and choose top left. Or if you have a keyboard with a number pad on it, the number pad all represent the different corners. So if I hit one, I'm in the bottom left. If I hit three, I'm in the bottom right. Eight will take me to the top middle. It looks just the same way as your number pad. So there's a fun little nice shortcut to actually setting up your origin points. So I can hit seven on the keyboard. That puts me in the top left, and that's exactly where I want to be. So we can go ahead and close this now. Now we have our player box on the background. But if we run this, nothing's actually going to happen at the moment. So what we want to do is select our player box, come over to instance variables, and we're going to add a few instance variables. So we're going to do up, and this will be a boolean. We are going to add right, which will be a boolean. We will add down, which is also a boolean. And we will add left, which of course is also a boolean. And you know what, while we're here, we're going to need one more eventually, so we might as well add it in. Let's do attack. ATK, that will also be a boolean. And then we can go ahead, go to behaviors, add new, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and at the bottom left here, we will select tile movement. Go ahead and click add. 
So we're going to need to make a couple of changes to the behavior of tiled movement. Right now it's moving in a grid of 32 by 32, which means if we actually play this and move, it's going to move twice as far as we want it. So we will change these to 16 by 16, and we're going to change the speed to 50 by 50. We can go ahead and click Save if you haven't saved it before. There we go. And now since we have default controls enabled that defaults the movement to the arrow keys, we can actually go ahead and hit play. And if we use the arrow keys, we can see our box moving around. If I just tap it once, we can see that it moves the full 16 pixels over into the next frame or into the next part of the grid. Excellent. Okay, so now that we have our player box in and moving, let's go ahead and get the animations in because nobody likes to look at a box moving around a screen. So I like to put all of my assets that don't start on the screen onto an object's layout. So what we're going to do is go over to Layouts over here in the Project Panel, right-click, Add Layout, Add Layout Only, and we're going to call this Objects. I don't like to have a white background on here. It just makes things a little harder to see, especially when I have white outlines on things, or eventually we will actually have images that are completely white. So I go ahead and just add a gray to it to make it a little bit easier to see the elements we'll put on. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And we are going to add in our player animations. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, this is a, it feels a bit of busy work, but unfortunately, because we're doing a top-down game, we have to put in the player in all four directions in all of its animations. It's just unfortunately the nature of the beast. So we will select Sprite. We will go down and we will call this player art. We will click. And now I'm going to show you what we're going to do, and we're going to do this a fair amount of time. So first up, we will go down to this animation frame, right click, import frames from strip. In the tiny adventure pack, let's go ahead and go back. We go to character. You can choose character one or two. They have the same animations. I'm just going with character one because it's the first one up. Idle, character idle down. Double click, import. Always check this number of horizontal cells versus vertical cells. That's basically asking how many images are in this animation. This animation has six frames. So we will go ahead and make this six and there's only one vertical. Direction is horizontal. And we will replace, make sure this is checked, to replace the entire animation. So that replaces anything you have in there currently. That'll make this a little easier moving forward. So hit import. That puts in the whole thing. So if we zoom in, we can see our player right here. Kind of moving up and down. Excellent. Let's go ahead and rename this. So select the animation. We are going to name this to idle underscore down. Uh, I use all caps for my animations. If you don't want to type it like that, you, you just will have to remember later how you typed it because we will be referencing this exactly and capitalization does matter. So if you want to just follow along, go ahead and make that all capital. We're going to come down to speed, change this to 10, and set looping to true. So now if we right click and take a look, we can see our character's bouncing up and down. That's his idle standing animation while he's facing down. Next up, we need to do the other three directions. So the easiest way to do that, since we already have the speed and looping set, we can go ahead and select the animation, right click, duplicate. It changes the name to just animation one, but everything else stays the same. So we can go ahead and change this name to idle underscore right. Right click down here in the animation frames, import from strip, select idle right, open. Number of cells is six, one, which is all correct, and replace entire animation. This is why we need to leave this checked because we have this animation here from facing down. If we click import now, it replaces all of it and we're good to go. So we're going to do that two more times. We need to do it for idle left. Right click, import frames from files, idle left. Oh, see here I made the mistake and if you do this, it, it's not a big deal, but if you see all of your images come in like this, that means that when you right-click and import files, you did from files, not strip. So that was my mistake. Make sure if you do that, it's not a big deal. You can even leave it there. You don't even have to do anything. Just click from strip and select the correct one. You get your image, import, and it replaces that whole thing. So if that happens, no big deal. Just try it one more time. Duplicate, idle up for our last direction for our idle. Right-click, import from strip, idle up. And there are six frames, import. 
and we are good to go. Now our running animation will be the same setting, so it'll be the speed of 10 and looping animation. So we can go ahead and continue this duplicating trend. We will right click, duplicate, animation. Let's go ahead and make this run underscore down. I believe in the actual files here. Let's go from strip. We'll go back to character one. They call it walking. You can call it walk, run, whatever. Again, just later on, you'll need to reference it the same. So we will do run down, open. It's saying here that there are only five images. We know there are six, so we'll go ahead and select six. All of the character animations in here are six frames. So if that's ever another number other than six, always make it six and you'll be fine. So now we have our player running down. Excellent. Now, while we're here, we might as well get in the attack animations as well. So these ones don't follow the exact same settings. So we can go ahead and right click, add animation. Now we get a brand new animation. Let's call this ATK underscore down. And we will right click, import files from strip, move back into character one, attack, and attack down. Again, these are all, there are six frames. Excellent, that one pulls it incorrectly, and we attack. Excellent, so duplicate, ATK underscore right, import from strip. Okay, and now we have all of our images in. So now, we don't need to worry about the actual bounding box for any of these, which is fine. We can leave it the size it is. Um, we won't be reading this bounding box for anything. This is just for player animation. But we, what we do need to concern ourselves with is the origin point. The origin point we don't want in the center. If we close out of here, we can see. Let me copy this over and throw it on the game real fast with our player. We can see it doesn't line up. So if it tries to sit in the same origin point as the player box, it's up here in the top left. So what we want to do is double click. We are going to change the origin point here to the top left. We will, I will hit seven on my keyboard or right click, quick assign top left. And now that's only applied to the first frame of animation. So what we're going to do is make sure you're on the frame with it in the top left, right click, apply to all animations. That means that all of these animations now have the origin point in the top left. And that is fine for all of them, except for attacking. Now attacking is a little bit different because these boxes are much different sizes because of the sword swing. The sword takes up a lot more room. So as you see this box here, if we look at its size is 23 by 23 for the entire outside, the entire bounding box of the image. If we look at the idle down, that is a 16 by 16. So the one thing we need to do is just make sure that our image point here stays in the correct place on all of the attacking. And now all we're gonna do is make sure that it is five pixels away from this top of the head here. So if we look at frame for attacking down, this is actually correct. And then the player attacks down. So that gives a little sweep where the player will move forward in his attack and then they will snap back into an idol like that. So we are okay with it moving, not being on the same Y axis, but we want it on the same X, always five away. So for attacking down, we are actually good where we are. Attacking right is incorrect though. We want that to be five pixels away from this top of the head here. As, as it stands at the moment for frame zero, we are two pixels away. So we're gonna go ahead and while we have the origin point selected, just hit left on the keyboard three times. We are now at X negative three, Y zero. We will go ahead, right click, and apply to whole animation, not all animation. If you do it to all animation, that's gonna set this to every single other animation. Whole animation will just be the attack right animation. So we'll apply to whole animation. And now if we check, our origin point is in the same position each time, which is pretty much what we want here. So we'll go down to attack left and do the same thing, except now we want this to be five pixels away from this top. So we'll select the origin point and set it there, which is X8, and we're gonna move it to the left five. So one, two, three, four, five. We will go ahead, right click, apply to whole animation, 
And last up, we go to attack up. As we can see, the origin point is way off on this one. So we will go to the top left here, or the top of the head, and we will hit left five times. One, two, three, four, five. Right click, apply to whole animation. And now if we actually play these, we should see them. They should work right. And the one thing I didn't change on all of these, my mistake, we need to change the speed of the attacks. The, the attack should actually be 20 for the speed. So not looping. Go ahead and select each one and set them to 20. And I think we are pretty much good with the player art for the moment. So we can go ahead and close this down. We don't need it on the actual game layer. So we'll delete this. Go over to your objects layout. Select the player art. We're going to give a couple instance variables. Our first instance variable will be anim. And that will be for animation. We will call that a string and click OK. Add one more. And this will be dir for direction. This will also be a string. We can close that. One last behavior to add, add new behavior. And we're gonna add the pin behavior it's because we're gonna be sticking this to our player box once we spawn it in. Okay, that is gonna do it for this video. If you're enjoying what you're seeing so far, please consider subscribing and I will see you next time for more Rocksmacker. Have a good one.